Hi, I'm Therese Maletti. I'm with Centerville City Schools. We are here to discuss the new pre-trip changes that have been implemented and are now in place for the state of Ohio. We have um, big changes. So we're gonna go over those changes and we'll do the pre-trip uh, so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. So now, as it stands, you can actually have a check sheet with you. The check sheet can be found in your pre-service manual and in the CDL manual. They're in the back of the books. So you can take this with you uh, while you're taking the test and check off the items if you choose to. I am not going to use this for my demonstration purposes, but your trainees may think that this is an invaluable tool to have with them when they go to take their test. So just know that that is an opportunity available for you. Okay, put that down. All right, so let's get started with our pre-trip. We are going to start with a safe start. First, we'll put on our seatbelt. The seatbelt is not frayed, it's not twisted, it's not cracked or broken, loose or missing. Our safe start, we're going to have our foot covering the service brake. We will see that our ABS light goes on and promptly goes off. The parking brake is set. The gear shift is in neutral. Once the wait to start light goes out, we will start up the bus. Again, ABS light goes on, promptly goes off. We will turn on our headlights to illuminate all of our gauges. The first thing that we're going to do after the safe start is a series of brake tests. The first brake test we're going to do is the parking brake test. The parking brake test, we will have the parking brake set. The gear shift we will put into drive. We will, dry, um, we will take our foot off of the service brake and tug on the accelerator. And we're not moving, so we know that the parking brake is holding. Now we're going to release the parking brake and take our foot off of the service brake. We'll drive forward approximately five miles an hour We'll push and put pressure on the service brake and we want to make sure that we're stopping smoothly and that we're not pulling to the left or to the right. Now we're going to put the bus back into neutral. We're going to keep the parking brake off. This is very important. We're also going to turn the bus off but put the key back into the accessory position so all of the gauges function. We want to make sure that we have at least 120 pounds of pressure in the air tanks for doing the brake, this series of brake tests. Okay, um, we want to make sure that the, the governor cutoff on this bus cuts off between 120 and 125 and we'll demonstrate that in just a moment um, before we move on. So we are going to put heavy pressure on the service brake. After the initial drop, the needles drop, after they drop, it will not lose more than three PSI in one minute. You will ask the examiner if they would like to time that. They may or may not. If they don't want to, they'll have you move on, but don't move on until they tell you to move on. Once they tell you to move on, you're going to start fanning the brakes. Above 55, the light and buzzer will sound. Between 20 and 40, the parking brake will set itself. Okay, so there's our low pressure light. There's our lights and buzzer sounding. Between 20 and 40, this will pop. Keep fanning the brake until the parking brake sets itself. And there it just did. So we know that all of the emergency features are functioning properly on the bus. So, we're going to start the bus back up. Again, there's that ABS light and it goes out. We're going to put the high idle on so our air tank pressure builds more rapidly. In the meantime, while we're waiting for it, we will go over the rest of the inside of the cabin and driver's area. Our steering wheel has no more than two inches or 10 degrees play. The horn works properly. The windshield wipers, washers work properly. Okay. The windshield itself has no stickers or decals and it's not cracked or broken, loose or missing. 
There's no pits or cracks. All of my mirrors are adjusted for me. The student mirror, I can see all the way to the back and the top of the first seat. I'm going to look at my indicators right now. This is my high beam indicator. This is my left turn signal indicator, my right turn signal indicator, my hazard lights indicator, my um, headlamp on and off. We'll turn that, oh, we're gonna keep that on for just a moment. We're going to have our fans high, low, and off. I'll keep those on for a moment. The noise suspension button is right there for railroad crossings. Okay, turn that off. We have our driver dome. We have our passenger dome lights. They are all functioning properly. Our strobe light, we will leave on. That was our governor cutoff. That noise that you just heard, noise, that came on between 120 and 125. Please make sure you know what your bus type, what the governor cutoff is at your for your specific bus type, okay? Because you will need to know. All right, moving on. Again, we have our safety belt latches securely, not twisted or frayed. Fans, heaters, and defrosters, high, low, and off. Our service door with the step light is clear. It's not cracked or broken, loose or missing, and it's functioning properly, as are the doors. We have our internal warning light. We have our internal loading light, ex, um, emergency override light, and the master switch that all are functioning properly. We also have our defrosters, high, low, and off. Okay. And we have our def gauge is right here. I did not point that out earlier. Um, so we have enough def, we have enough fuel. Uh, we have our voltmeter and our um, temperature gauge and our oil gauge, they are um, raising to normal level and normal level for uh, temperature would be right around 190 and oil be between 40 and 60. All right. And of course our voltmeter is gonna sit between 12 and 14. Our emergency equipment is located right here. Our body fluid cleanup kit is fully stocked. We have three emergency reflective triangles. Our fire extinguisher is rated, dated, and charged, and it's in the green. And we have our first aid kit, which is fully stocked. It's got 24 dry box bandages, proof of insurance, and three emergency contacts. Okay. All of our seats are securely bolted to the floor, and our seat frames are a bolted and mounted securely to the floor, and the cushions are attached securely to the frames. We're gonna check them by lifting up on each seat and pulling on the backs as we return. On our way up, we will check the emergency hatches and windows. So, our front hatch. Lights come on, buzzer sounds. Okay. Our window. Lights come on, buzzer sounds. And it all shuts off when it's closed up. We, we check the other three emergency windows the same way. Our side emergency door, lights come on, buzzer sounds. The rubber seal is all in place, not cracked or broken, loose or missing. Locks into place. And everything shuts off when the door is closed and the handle is down. Again, I would re check this window and all the windows the same as I checked the front one. This one here we're going to check as well because we want to see the strobe light. Okay, so we're going to push this up. The strobe light is on. It's hard to see because it's so bright outside, but you can kind of see a reflection flash on the white portion of the emergency exit. Okay, lights go on, buzzer sounds, it releases. It all goes off when we close it up. Okay, our rear window. Lights come on, buzzer sounds, opens freely, and all goes off when the lever is pushed back into position. We'll check our seat bottoms and backs by lifting up and checking the backs all the way forward. So you're going to want to check all of the seats, 
the same way that I just showed you how and just continue up doing the same check okay now we're gonna take a look outside and check our front steer tires and gearbox and so in, in order to do that to see more easily we're going to turn the wheel to the left so we can see that we'll also turn off the bus and take the keys with us okay one more thing that we need to add that was not in place previously when you're exiting the bus first of all your keys must come with you and secondly make sure you have three-point contact three-point contact means that you're holding on to one of the gra grab rails as you're exiting the bus if you do not do so it's potentially an automatic failure so please remember to hang on to the grab rail All right, so here is our service door, our service door. All the glass is in place, the rubber seals are in place, they're not cracked or broken, loose or missing. Okay. And they, as you saw earlier, work freely. Inside and outside step light are clear. They're not cracked or broken, loose or missing. You saw earlier that they were functioning properly. The grab rails are not cracked or broken, loose or missing. They are securely bolted and mounted. I'll end our set tread is not lifted to pose a tripping hazard. It's not cracked or broken, loose or missing. We have our reflective reflector is amber before the duels, red after the duels. Our reflective tape is amber. Our reflectors, side markers, and clearance lights are amber before the duels and red after. We have our up-to-date school sticker for this school year. Okay. My mirror brackets are bolted and mounted securely, not cracked or broken, loose or missing. All four of them, this side as well. We're gonna take a look at our amber clearance lights, our amber warning lights, our red loading lights, our amber turn signals and hazards, our clear headlamps and high beams. They are all the proper color. They're not cracked or broken, loose or missing. We don't have any leaks under the bus, which would be windshield washer up here, the bus is not leaning to the left or to the right. Our circuit breaker box, there are no additional fuses. Our stop arm, as you may have seen earlier, extends. It's got red lenses. They're all bolted and mounted securely, not cracked or broken, loose or missing. Okay, reflective tape is also on here. Clearance lights, amber before the duels, red after, amber turn signals and hazards. We've got our mud flap. Our tire is four 30 seconds tread evenly worn all the way across. There are no abrasions, bulges, or cuts in the tires. The rim has no welds other than factory. The valve stem is straight. It's centered, it has a metal cap. And if I were to check the tire pressure, I would use a tire pressure gauge and it's not leaking. We have our lug nuts. All of our lug nuts are in place and tight. If one was loose, we might see a rust trail, or if one was overly tightened, we might see a shiny uh, silver um, streak, um, indicating that it was too tight. We have our hub oil seal, bolted and mounted securely, not cracked or broken, loose or missing. There's an adequate level of fluid inside of the hub seal, and it's not leaking. If it was leaking, we might see a spray pattern, okay? Let's take a look and inside here. I'll do the best I can to point things out. We are gonna start with our gearbox. Our gearbox is bolted and mounted securely, not cracked or broken, loose or missing. We have our pitman arm and our drag link, not cracked or broken, loose or missing. They are in place with the castle nut and cotter key. Our gearbox itself all of the hoses are connected and the hoses are not kinked, they are not leaking, and um, everything is mounted and bolted securely. Nothing is leaking. We have our front and rear spring mounts. 
Front and rear spring mounts, they are bolted top and bottom, not cracked or broken, loose or missing with the bolt bushings. We have our torque leaf and our spring leaf. Torque and spring leaf, not cracked or broken, loose or missing. Our U-bolt is right there, not cracked or broken, loose or missing, bolted and mounted securely. We have our tie rod, I'll show you that on the other side, it's easier to see, but it's the long rod that goes all the way across. We have our push rod and our slack adjuster. They're not cracked or broken, loose or missing. If I were to tug on them, they would not move more than one inch. We have our brake chamber. The brake chamber is clamped securely, not cracked or broken, loose or missing. It's not leaking. We have our brake hose and our ABS line. The little one is the ABS line. The little one is the ABS line right here. And the bigger one is your brake line. It's not cracked or broken, loose or missing. They're not kinked, they're not leaking. This is our shock absorber right here. Not cracked or broken, loose or missing. It's bolted and mounted top and bottom. And again, it is not leaking. Okay, we're gonna look inside here. We have our brake linings. They're not worn dangerously thin. Um, if we remove the dust cover, the brake drums have no grease, oil, holes, or debris. Okay. door opens easily from the outside. Seals are in place. They're not cracked or broken, loose or missing. Locks in place. Okay. We've done the front, so we're not going to do the back, but what we are going to point out are the airbags. So the airbags are right here. Let me see if I can get a better picture. It's that round thing next to the shock absorber. That is your airbag. Not cracked or broken, loose or missing, and it's not leaking. Okay. Exhaust system, the red reflector. Okay, in the back, we'll point out our red clearance lights, our amber warning lights, our red loading lights, our red side, uh, side marker lights. We have our clear backup lights, our brake lights, our red, our turn signals and hazard lights, our amber, our tail lights, our red reflectors, our red in the back, tape is secure. All the proper color, not cracked or broken, loose or missing, and you'll see in a little while that they are functioning properly. We are going to take a look inside of our engine compartment mainly for leaks. I'm not going to talk too much about parts, but we are going to talk about fluids. So we want to make sure that our coolant level is at an adequate level between add and full. The cap is in place, the hoses are connected and attached securely, and none are kinked or leaking. We can clearly see that this is um, at an adequate level. We have our power steering reservoir. We would check it by removing the dipstick, wiping it off, reinserting it, bringing it back out and it should read between add and fill. This also is a container that you can see the fluid in so you can actually check it from the outside as well. It's not cracked or broken, loose or missing, nothing is leaking. All of our hoses, lines, wires are connected properly. They're not kinked, they're not leaking. Our uh, water pump not kinked or leaking, no problems there. We have our oil dipstick. Also, we would check it the same way we check this one. Pull it out, wipe it off, reinsert it, take it back out again. It will read between add and full. Transmission fluid, we would check once a week with the engine running. Okay. All right, moving on. Our battery compartment, we have three batteries. They are connected, the tray and pin are in place, all of the connections are made, there's no excessive corrosion. Okay, windows are not cracked or broken, there's no vandalism to the side of the bus or damage. We have our depth tank, the cap, neck, and 
cage are in place, bolted and mounted securely, not cracked, broken, loose, or missing. As we look underneath, we can see that there are no puddles of any kind um, of death or any other fluids. All of the hoses and connections are made, not cracked or broken, loose or missing, not leaking. Our diesel tank also, the cap is in place, neck and cage. The cap is on tight. The uh, cage itself is bolted and mounted securely, not cracked or broken, loose or missing. And as you can see, nothing is leaking. Here's a better view of the tie rod. Right there. There it is. Okay. And we also have our shock absorber and the frame and cross members. Okay, all very easily seen through here. And if you didn't see it before, this is our ABS line and our brake line. Brake chamber, push rod, slack adjuster, U-bolt. I'm just going over them same. You don't have to say them again. They were already set on the other side, but we're just giving you a better view from this side. Okay, all right. At this time, we're going to have your examiner check all of your lights and the functionality of all of your lights. Okay, now I'm gonna have my examiner go out and do an outside light check. Would you please go outside and check all of my lights? I will have my window open and I will point and say what I am asking you to look at. Thank you. indicator and clearance lights all the way around. and the step light on the inside. And those are all of my light checks that I would do. And at this time I am done with my pre-trip and I'm pretty sure I'm moving on to maneuverability.